So that's the world we keep going into. And, and even then we don't really know because it will keep changing. How, how many people work in IT in the room? IT um, moving around the world doing different jobs. In, in starting out our own curriculum and wanting it only to be on a uh, you know, tech platform, there's no, there's no paper involved anymore, distributing knowledge. Um, we've, we've looked at three different companies now because their own technology is evolving so rapidly, it's hard to know, you know who to settle with. Um, so that's the world the kids are going into. And one of the things we've been working with the teachers on here is. Um, is the use of straightforward common sense and the use of simple questions like, so what? We tell them everything we write. We've been working on learning principles and drive a school and things like mission statements. And there's a real so what about those things. People write all sorts of things, but they don't actually apply them. So you know, the stuff is on the wall. I guess the first day it's up there, somebody notices after that it's just wallpaper. And there's no so what. So a lot of our work is to cut through <coughs> All the, all the jargon of education and all the stuff that is, that is stuck on walls and asks so what questions. So, so that's the world these kids are going into. Um, so what does that mean for, for, for your kids? Um, what does it mean for all the international schools, but your, your interest is, is for the international school of higher event. Um, how, how do we do that? I've been all over the world talking to parents, and I am a parent. Um, and those three things seem to end up as being the simplest way of people expressing what they want for their kids. Everybody wants their kids to be happy, I guess. Uh, successful, and that means, I think, successful on their own terms. You know, we had all sorts of plans for our own, for our own kids, not for myself. I'd be surprised if, uh, if they do exactly what we had planned. But honestly, we don't really care. As long as they're happy doing what they are doing, and they're good at it. Actually, the Cambridge research into happiness, Cambridge research into human happiness, found that four things determined human happiness from all the people they worked with. Uh, one was becoming good at something you're passionate about. That's why I get a kick out of photography or curriculum design. Becoming passionate and become good at something you're passionate about. Partnering with good people you know, in your private life but also in your work life. Then you have to enjoy the people that you work with. Nobody likes to go to work dreading that people are going to see. Um, and having uh, the power to determine one's own big life decisions rather than being told to go somewhere because you've got no choice. And those three things, the fourth actually was physical well-being, but I don't talk about that one so much. Um, I could maybe do it more of it. Um, so happy, successful, and ethical. Uh, I don't think there's been any difference. Sometimes different cultures put these three words in different orders. But I think we want our kids to be good people. You know, I'm more concerned my kid does the right thing than, honestly, than they get the right job. All the time we're faced with ethical decisions to make, and we're very concerned in developing kids who, when faced with a difficult moral decision, will do the right thing. So, I'm hoping I'm speaking to an audience that actually believes that you want your kids to be those three things. Happy kids, happy adults, successful adults, ethical adults. Um, and then how do you turn that into a curriculum? And so much good work has happened in this school already. We've had a great time with Gordon and myself and my colleague before we moved on to Bangalore working on the actual specifics of the curriculum. Um, what we'll be doing is um, not replacing everything at all. What we come in, what we do is we come in, we make a plan with the school and we, we always look for simplicity. So our simple planning method is where do we want to be, where are we now, and how will we close the gap? So, where we want to be, we've already set up a set of educational goals for the whole school. And we've now done an exercise with where the school is now, and it's pretty close to those goals. And we simply work together to close the gap between the intended outcomes for the school and where the school is now. Um, and that gives, hopefully, continuity to you guys, because I think the last thing you need is for the school to lurch around from one direction to another. It's confusing, you know, it's one step forward, two steps back. So we build on what the school already has towards this sort of international vision that is shared by over 100 schools now. Um, because frankly, for any school, and I've got uh, nearly 200 faculty, um, even with 200 faculty, it's really quite difficult to design your own curriculum. Most teachers, not all, but most teachers are not curriculum designers, frankly. 
you know, they may do their best with it, but they're not trained to be <coughs> designers. By pooling our resources, and in our case by working with the world's best writers, uh, we really don't have to go in alone. Um, so, for example, our science work is being done with the uh, Centre for Scientific Research at the University of Sheffield Hallam in the UK. Our work on character education is being done with the University of Berkeley in uh, California. Uh, our literacy continuum is being done with the University of Perth in, in Australia, working with the person who wrote the South Australia Literacy Continuum. Um, so all of the work we're doing is we've, by pooling our resources, we've pulled in the best thinkers and the best writers from different systems to write a, a rigorous, continuous, elegant, standards-based curriculum, which will take kids up to grade 8 or in some schools up to grade 10. After that, most schools are doing the IB Diploma or the Advanced Placement or A-levels, uh, because uh, obviously because of university placement. So it's very good company that we're working with. Really, after all our years of research, the best thinkers, the best writers we can find in each discipline, and then we've pulled it all together into one system. Um, so it's a collaborative effort of, uh, of the, some of the very, very best schools in the world. The initial schools that, that have uh, joined us are schools like, we began with the United World College of Southeast Asia in Singapore, the International School of Bangkok, the International School of Brussels, Zurich International School, Hong Kong Academy, the American International School of Johannesburg, um, Bangalore International School, International School of Hyderabad, just a growing group of schools gravitating towards this common uh, target. That's the, um, that's the location of the numbers of schools, so that's the distribution of schools that have joined the initial conversation. Uh, these were the schools that came to our launch conference uh, that was about a year ago in Brussels. We had some top speakers, a lot of the speakers from the schools themselves. So that's the kind of <coughs> scope of this, uh, this global collaborative. We, uh, 